Hello everyone. So today's case is about Peter Spencer. Um it's really it's really sad. It's also really confusing. I, when I was researching this I wasn't sure how I felt about the decision at first. Because at first I was kind of like, yeah, it could be this one thing. And then I was like, you know what? Something about this just isn't adding up. So we're talking about it. Also, his family is also extremely sad about the outcome. And they called this a modern day lynching in an article that I was reading. So I think we should talk about it. So all the links that I use for research will be down below. And let's go ahead and get into the story of Peter Spencer. So Peter, 29, was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and immigrated to the United States in 20, 2013 to live with family in Pennsylvania. He and his fiance Carmela King, were expecting a baby in June of 2022, and he'd intended on opening a restaurant with his mom, serving Jamaican food. However, his life would be cut short in 2021. So, Peter would accept an invitation from a former co-worker to hang out at a cabin in Rockland Township, Venango County. And I do want to say real quick that I couldn't find any names of the former co-worker or of anybody else included. And maybe that's because of the outcome. They were There was no charges filed, spoiler alert, for what we're going to get into. But I could not find any names. So, Rockland Township in Venango County was about 85 miles northeast of the city, which was Pittsburgh, which is where he was from, or living, I should say. And this uh, trip would take place on December 11th, or the start of it would take place, would start on December 11th. And just to note that the co-worker was white, as well as, as well as the two other men that were at the cabin, and those other men, Peter did not know. He only knew the co-worker. So, Pennsylvania State Police were called to the cabin on Carl's Road just before 2.30 a.m. on December 12th and found Peter dead on the front lawn with multiple gunshot wounds. A suspect and three other people were at the home and they were detained and questioned, but all four would be released. And I do want to say is I'm not sure who the extra person was, um, because it was just the co-worker and then two other people, but there would be four people in the scenario. So I'm not sure who the extra person that was there. Probably just a friend or a neighbor. Um, but they would all be released. And police said that they found multiple firearms, quote, ballistic evidence, end quote, and controlled substance substances at the home and uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms and I believe weed were actually named in the article. I know for a fact hallucinogenic mushrooms were. So according to witnesses Peter took the hallucinogenic hallucinogenic uh, mushrooms and started acting crazy firing, dozen, firing dozens of rounds from an AK-47 assault rifle that he'd purchased illegally. When other campers tried to get away he ordered them at gunpoint to stay and that's when Peter's friend the co-worker shot him nine times with a pistol while facing him and the reason why I enunciated that the way I did is because of the ruling from the police so we're gonna we're, I have thoughts about that so we're gonna get back to that later but just remember Nine times with a pistol while facing him. Facing Peter. And this is just according to the witnesses. This is what they say happened. I am not saying that happened. I I don't quite believe that's what happened. But we'll get into my, my thoughts later. But The family of Peter has called his murder a modern day lynching, like I said earlier. And they have demanded justice. However, the district attorney, Sean White announced that the shooting was determined to be justified in self-defense and that no charges would be filed. And a quote from this motherfucker. He says, We believe in this case that there is enough evidence presented for self-defense that we are not going to be able to overcome our burden 
and to show this was not self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. And for that reason, there will be no charges filed against the suspect in this case, end quote. Now, I will say that the story that the people are presenting and the presence of drugs and guns at the house, I can kind of understand why he would say that it probably... There, it, there probably would be no conviction, basically. I can understand that because they have to be able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that this was an intended murder. And I can. I, this is what I was saying when I was like, okay, I could understand that. You can't prove it. There's just something there that makes you go, hmm, may, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he did take these drugs and it did mess with him. Maybe. And that's why I was saying I was a little bit confused. And continuing on with a quote from Sean White, he says, He was not ambushed. There were not multiple shooters. There was one, and thus thus far, ballistics and the autopsy have confirmed the witness statements from that night. End quote. So, state police previously said they had brought in Heritage Affairs team that investigates hate crimes, and members of that unit said at a news conference that no hate or bias was found during the investigation, and a quote from that team is, these individuals were solely friends. They were here for a camping trip, and that's why we have indicated that there was no hate and or bias attached to this, end quote. And now, I'm just, this, before we get into my last bit from the, it's a quote from a family member, here are my thoughts. <laughs> One, and I'm, I'm doing this now because when I was writing down my notes for this, I immediately had thoughts and I just had to write them down before I forgot them. So one, he had to, sh the, the unnamed friend, the co-worker, he had to shoot Peter nine times for self-defense. Nine times. And the thing is, we don't know if he was hit all nine times, but we do know that he had multiple gunshot wounds. So it was at least two, probably more. Nine times for self-defense. I'm really confused. Secondly, how do we know that Peter is the one that purchased these guns illegally? And he just brought all of them to the cabin. How do we know it wasn't the friends? Um, that's a little weird. And then... Peter only knew one person out of all of them, that co-worker. So, the Heritage Affairs team, their comment about them... They were all just solely friends. No, they weren't. He was only friends with one of them. And he wasn't even described as a friend. He was described as a former co-worker that he was an acquaintance with. So technically, he was not even described as a friend. So your comment is actually invalid. You're, as far as I'm concerned, you have absolutely no reason to say this wasn't a hate crime because they weren't actually friends. I didn't see in any article that these people were described as his friends. He only knew one person, and that person was not described as a friend. It was either acquaintance or co-worker. I never saw a friend. And you might say, well, why would he go to the cabin if they weren't friends? When I had, when I would work, was working at my retail jobs, I had co-workers that I was acquaintances with that I would hang out with. But I wouldn't say that we were friend friends. I would hang out with them outside of work, doing stuff that friends would do. But I wasn't like, I wouldn't call them like my close friends. You know what I'm saying? It was just to have fun with. So yes, it is actually possible for him to hang out with these people and not be close friends. That is a possibility. Now going back to Sean White saying that there was not multiple shooters. There was one. He is absolutely right. There was one, and I believe that one f that one shooter was the former coburger slash friend. He was the shooter. He's the one that did the shooting. Supposedly, Peter was firing off dozens of rounds. Never said he shot at anybody. Yes, they said he threatened somebody at gunpoint, but never said that he shot anybody else because he was the only one with a gunshot wound. Which means the only shooter that shot somebody was the coworker. 
and maybe, maybe he was on drugs. I have never taken mushrooms. Um, I just think that this is very convenient. I don't think it was looked into that well. Part of me feels like he went there with a co-worker that he maybe was close with, was at least an acquaintance with, was having a good night. And I think these other two people, I think there could have been an issue. Maybe it was they were doing drugs together. They affected Peter in some sort of way. I don't know. I think maybe there was a fight. I don't think Peter was going as crazy as they were saying. I think... Maybe it wasn't planned out, but I do think they eventually decided that they were going to harm Peter. I think they decided to just do it in that moment. I don't think it was like, we're going to lure this person out here and harm them. But I don't think it was necessarily for a friendly trip. At least, not completely, not all the way. At least, I think at some point in the night, something happened. They were probably high, drunk, whatever. Maybe Peter was acting a little erratically. But I think someone might have seen an opportunity. I don't know. Because it's the nine bullets. The nine the nine bullets that get me. I don't give a shit what someone's on. You don't need to shoot somebody nine times. You really don't. Um, you can really just shoot them in the legs. <laughs> They're gonna fall. You don't. You Do you know what a bullet feels like? You don't need to shoot somebody that many times in self-defense. You really fucking don't. And he was facing Peter. So. He obviously had a pistol on him. You couldn't have, like, stopped Peter beforehand. I don't know. Something about it is just really weird to me. I think there was an issue, something switched, and they just decided that they were going to harm him. That's what I think happened. And I think it's really shitty that the police, I don't think they did a good job. Um, I do understand what he was saying, that if this was to go to trial, basically, they wouldn't be able to overcome that burden of proving it wasn't self-defense. Because I think the witnesses did a really good job of painting Peter as the bad guy. But then there's just the little details that I, that make me stop and go, hmm, maybe, just maybe. So, I understand that. But I don't like his comment about there not being multiple shooters. He wasn't ambushed. We don't, we don't know that. We don't know that. You're completely taking what they say. And the thing is, I couldn't find anything about his autopsy. It was never released. So maybe, maybe it does prove something. But I don't know. And that's my thought on it. Um, but just to end this off, um, his mother, Isilda, this is her thoughts on there being no charges filed. And she says, I'm dead right now. That's how I feel. Dead. No emotion. Nothing. I'm trying to protect my other son. End quote. I can't imagine being this mother and just... You're not, your son is essentially murdered. Like, he was shot, whether it was in self-defense or not, he was murdered. And that person is just, like, off the hook because their word was taken. Supposedly the autopsy confirms it. I feel like the family wouldn't call this a modern-day lynching if there wasn't something else there, you know? But what do you guys think? I 100% think... I don't 100% think I should take that back. I definitely think there's something off about it. The nine shots, um, the, the friend, the extra friends, that kind of gave me a weird vibe. I don't know. I can't 100% say that it wasn't self-defense, but I also can't get on board that it was. Like, there's just, I don't know. It just, something is weird about it. So, I just think that this co-worker should have been looked into a little bit more. Um, I think there should have been maybe a little bit more investigating. I don't know what they would do. But I just don't completely agree. So, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think down below. 
I am so sorry to the family that this happened to Peter and to Carmela and their child is now without a father and that is absolutely heartbreaking. You know, he was only 29. He's only a couple years older than me and that is so young. He still had so much life to live and it's absolutely heartbreaking that he's not here to be with his child and to open the restaurant with his family and to just live his life. Just from the photos I've seen of him, he seems so happy and it's a shame that he didn't get to live his life. So I am very sorry. Um, I hope that one day proper justice can be served or something can be done. Um, but until then, thank you so much for listening to Peter Spencer's story and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.